Hi, my name is Nora. I'm going to be your nurse today. Can you please state your name and date of birth? William Brandner, 92297. Alright, so it all checks out. Um, I provided privacy with a blanket. Um, I'm going to be doing a skin assessment on you today. Alright, so I'm going to take this down. Alright, so the skin looks pink, dry, and intact. I don't see any lesions. I don't see any wounds. I see the back. Okay. So I don't see any wounds. Um, and the skin looks dry. For scars, I'm going to check your arms. Um, there's a visible scar on the left wrist. in the abdomen. I didn't see any scars in the back. Um, so there's a scar on his right knee medially and also laterally. They're both about one centimeter. And then there is a um, there is a scar on the lateral side. It's about three inches long, and then there's a scar on the top of his knee, which is about four um, inches long, and the feet are okay. Um, so now I'm going to palpate your skin for temperature. So he's warm. There's no, um, he's warm all around. He's a little bit colder toward his feet, but that should not be a problem. Um, and now I'm going to palpate your arms, like your extremities, for edema. So the, um, there's no pitting edema. The skin was able to recoil very quickly. Um, and now I'm going to check your skin tuger. Um, your skin tuger was less than two seconds. And that means that he is hydrated. And then I'm going to assess your nails. So the nails are pink. There's no signs of clubbing. The nail angle is at um, less than 160. There are no lesions on them. And then cap refill. Cat refill was three seconds, so that shows that the heart is pumping effectively, and I'm going to do it on your toes as well. And also it was three seconds on your toes, and then I'm going to inspect your scalp. So there are no bumps, there are no masses that I can feel, um, there are no open wounds, and there are no inhabitants, and if I, if I expected that there would be inhabitants, I would wear gloves, and then also if there was a wound, I would wear gloves if I was anywhere near that area. So. Alright, hi, my name is Nora, I'm going to be your student nurse today, can you please State your name and date of birth. Morgan Brandner, 92297. All right, so that checks out. Um, today, we're going to be um, irrigating your wound. We're going to be taking a culture of your wound to see if there's any inf like bacteria growing in there. And then we're going to be applying new dressing. So we're just going to clean that out. Um, what is your pain level at right now? Uh, an eight. All right, so in this instance, we would... Um, give the patient some sort of narcotic to bring the pain down, um, and then we would come back in 30 minutes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna irrigate the wound. So when we do that, we are going to be putting on clean gloves, um, and I'll be letting you know when I'm gonna be changing from sterile to clean. Um, and then we would be getting a little pad for his, um, for underneath his wound. I'm already wearing these. All 
All right, so I'll be putting a little pad underneath his arm. And I ensured privacy. Um, thank you for doing that. Um, and I have um, closed the door. So first what we're gonna do is I'm going to be assessing the wound right away. Um, it seems like there is a little bit of uh, serious drainage, also some purulent um, drainage, the appearance around the skin, there's no redness, there's no swelling. Um, it seems like a secondary intention uh, scar. So it seems like he has surgery and they just kept it open because they needed to. Um, and then I would note the odor. So the odor seems kind of tangy. Um, seems like there is a stench coming off of it. There is a moderate amount of fluid. And this, before this, I would remove the dressings and then I would be assessing the wound. I forgot to say that. And then I would measure the wound. So it's seven centimeters in length and three centimeters in width. And the depth, let me get one of these. The depth seems about um, one centimeter. And um, then I would note that there is definitely some inflammation going on. And next we would remove the gloves that I was just doing to assess the appearance of the wound. And I would put on sterile gloves because then we are going to start irrigating the wound, which means there's a sterile field. So there would be a sterile field underneath him. Um, which I can do. I'll lift your arm up. So then there's a sterile field. And then for irrigating, what I would be doing is I would be putting on a face shield eye protection in PPE just so I wasn't getting um, splashed on with the um, contents from the wound. So then when I have my gloves off before I put my sterile gloves on, I would get a sterile basin ready. Um, and then I would also get my saline solution and I would open it sterilely and then pour it in and then I would put my sterile gloves on and proceed with the procedure, which I would take a syringe from a sterile packaging from the kit, and I would um, take some fluid up. And from here, I would be, from clean to dirty, I would be cleaning the wound. In this instance, we would have a basin underneath um, to catch all of the contents, but we can use, we can use this. I would like to raise your arm. There we go. So I would be going from clean to dirty. In that instance, it would be clean, and we would um, reassess the wound after that. And I'll take this away from you. Um, and then what I would do is I would dry around the wound, just making sure everything is clean. And then what I would do is I would remove my gloves, form hand hygiene. I would reassess your pain level. So what was your pain level be after that? Uh, four. All right. So next, what we're going to be doing is collecting a wound culture um, for your uh, wound. And what we would be doing with that, we would get a culture swab. This would all be sterile technique again. So after performing hand hygiene, after cleaning out the wound, 
we would put sterile gloves back on and it would be a sterile field. And what we would usually have is a Q-tip that's blue for bacteria. So what we would do is we would take the Q-tip and we're not gonna wanna touch around the wound at all. And we're gonna wanna roll and get every surface of the wound, making sure you're not touching the edges of the wound. And then once we're done with that, we would sterilely put it back in to the specimen tube and then send it off to the lab. And then the next part we are going to do, I have to get more. Okay. So the next part we are going to do is I'm going to be putting dressings back into your wound with a sterile technique. So because I didn't contaminate my gloves when I was taking the wound culture, I would just keep my sterile gloves on throughout the rest of the procedure. So what we need for this is sterile, it would come in a kit and it would be sterile gauze um, that we would use for packing the wound. And when we're packing the wound, we don't want it to be overflowing. We don't want it be, to be packed too hard in there. And we just want it to lay flat so the surface is flat. So I would put more sterile solution into the basin. And then using some Q-tips, using some Q-tips and forceps, I would pick the forceps up, dip them down into the solution. And then what I can do is I can wring it out because I have sterile gloves on. And then I would pick it up and then I would place it in and then pack the wound with the gauze. making sure that we got everything. And then since I have fully packed the wound, um, I would then um, place an ABD pad on. So it goes over here and we would place the pad on top of the wound. So here's the ABD pad. We place that right on top of the wound. And then um, what I could do is um, I would tape the surrounding sides. I would tape the edges. And then I could take my gloves off because I am done and this is all sterile at this point. And I would um, sign my name and then date it and sign the time. And so then the nurse coming in or I um, during the shift know when I last changed the dressing. 